Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. There's always a level of help or a, a amount of help you uh, give someone according to a circumstance. You don't always go all the way to help someone and that someone being, you know, you pick your, uh, you pick your, uh, your, uh, your volume, intensity and the person. You can't help everyone you don't you can't you can't possibly have the resources otherwise you will have nothing all your life will be just helping others and at one point you need to eat you need to you need shelter but if you help someone you're always going to give everything you got and you're going to have nothing after that so what i'm trying to say is uh, help is measured you should help but in a measured way i'm talking about united states and ukraine the problem is here is that even if you ha you're altruistic, your altruism goes a certain kind of distance. It doesn't go all the way. I mean, it might, but not always. In this case, we have some people in control of us and through their altruism, let's put it nicely, let's say that's altruism, runs against my interest and my life and my family and my uh, neighborhood and my country runs against my country's interest, the altruism of helping another country. Now we know this is not altruism here, it doesn't have anything to do with altruistic and moral values and all that, that the United States helps Ukraine. That's been planned for some time and that's part of the plan, NATO expansion, Russia must go uh, down, go back over there as a weasel country. That's, is, that's the whole goal here in Ukraine. It's not Ukraine, uh, problem with Russia. Yeah, there are some problems like in any other countries against any other countries, but all those were planned, seeded, seed uh, was planted in that soil a long time ago. So I'm not going to go back in it. I'm just going to go and see what's going on here. How the United States is using our money more than we would like to help a, per, uh, a person, a country that actually we are partly, I would say, responsible of what's going on over there, I would say. Uh, I, what I'm trying to say is the United States is not uh, um, a victim and there's nothing to blame here. Mm, I don't think so. And why? I look at the facts and I start with NATO expansion, which was wrong. Secondly, they were warned. Thirdly, they said uh, Ukraine will join NATO at one point. They put armament, they put whatever they put over there. And then it happened what happened in... Uh, uh, 2014 in Kiev, the overthrow of a legitimate democratically elected government in Kiev with the help of... Okay, so no, I will say a lot of blame could go in other areas but Russia. Russia uh, uh, is guilty, yeah, it's guilty. Ukraine is guilty, yeah, it's guilty. But many others, maybe even more than these two countries I mentioned. And this is where it's gonna burn us. This article comes from the New Voice of Ukraine from November 16th. 2022, Biden asks Congress to allocate $37 billion to Ukraine. Extra. $37 billion. I think it's almost or more than $20 billion as we speak right now. So we'll get about to almost $60 billion from our mind because we, do, we, we, we are living so greatly. We, everything is perfect. Everything is solved. We have so much money. Everything is good that we don't know what to do with it. So, you know, there's nothing else to solve here, to fix here. Everything is fixed. Society is great. Economy is excellent. U.S. President Biden has asked, has asked Congress to allocate more, more than $37 billion in emergency aid to Ukraine, the Associated Press reported. The request includes $21.7 billion for military, intelligence and other defense support. That's going to double um, the Ukrainian defense, uh, I don't know, money, more than, or will almost be like Russia's. <laughs> well, we're gonna get to what, almost, I would say, 45 billion, together with uh, the European Union, probably is gonna get about $50 billion in uh, aid, in the budget, military budget, that these guys coughed up. More than, more than I don't know, 80, 80 countries in the world. I think they'll be like on the 15th or 13th place if they get about $60 billion, 
last time when I make a video on that, I made an exact numbers i gave the exam numbers so and it says 14.5 billion dollar for humanitarian assistance and support for the work of ukrainian government so the government must be function let's fund that as we fund here so that, that means we're going to have some people on the payroll that's what it is we pay you you function but here we don't have money for um universal uh, health care we don't have money for uh, this and that uh, no we can't increase uh, the pay no the payment no we can't the wages no 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 but let's do it in ukraine you can say well what are you gonna do with 14.5 billion dollars well give it to me and i can show you i can do a lot of things with that you can build a, f a few kindergartens uh, you can build a few hospitals you can do a lot of things and 900 million dollars for health care and support for Ukrainian living in the United States. What about for Romanians living in the United States? I want that money. And 626 million for nuclear security support to Ukraine. What does that mean? What does that mean? Nuclear support. So, nine, so it's 1 billion, 900 million let's say it, uh, one one billion dollar for health care and support for ukrainians living in the united states did you hear my fellow americans i don't mind giving them but it's coming from me and from my children and you ask why for something that was funded and organized and all that you know help goes to a certain extent and then you say hey am i used here yes the biden administration's request also includes nine point 25 billion dollar to prepare for a possible winter COVID-19 surge. <laughs> Zip it. Yeah. The uh, Associated Press notes that the request for a significant amount of funds for Ukraine came at a time when the Republican Party is poised to take control of the House of Representatives after the midterm elections for both houses of the U.S. legislature. Legisla yeah, legislature. Well, uh, this is a lie, and I'm telling you why. All these funds will still go through if the Republicans are coming. If you try to tell me that uh, those uh, right-wingers that like to shoot guns and like wars and like to be, uh, you know, the Republicans, right? Right-wingers, right-wingers are, according to these guys, uh, the Nazis and the fascists that are right-wingers, which, as I said, and according to uh, Denis de Souza, which is fantastically explained that, no, they are leftist movements. But anyway, somehow they're right uh, uh, on the right because they were nationalistic, right? That's why they're, they're on the right. But then Gandhi was a nationalist. Mandela was a nationalist. What are they going to do with those guys? Were they Nazis? So you see, that's not necessarily a... Uh, um, you know, trait of this, but I'm not going to go into of, uh, you know, the Nazis and the uh, nationalists and all that. So anyway, in the nationalism, I'm talking about being a trait of uh, unnecessary Nazi and fascism. It is, it was, but then you call the, the other two I mentioned. So anyway, they say here that oh, if the Republicans are coming, they will not send aid of Odell. They will send. Why? Because they are just administrators of some uh, taxes and money they make the this not they they write this decision that's going to be sent as an order from other interests that have these politicians in their little hand like this so if it's republicans or the democrats coming is the same shit a little bit of a different ones you know instead of using sugar to uh, uh sweet something you use uh, corn syrup it's going to be sweet it's just going to be a different uh, you know different but enough flavor, but a different stores. The same here. They will still send that. They will still give that. They will still, still do everything what the Democrats will do. History showed me the same way. Why? The same thing. Because the, the guys behind the interest that are behind both parties will send the country the direction they want it to be sent. And these guys are just going to do it for them. And they pretend to fight. We're going to get uh, control of the house. No, we're going to get. Doesn't really matter doesn't really matter you don't believe me look in the in, in the past in history and when the republicans came uh, to, to power let me know how many rights were given to me back 
Like for instance, we say, no man, no checks on any guns anymore. You go and buy a gun, like you, uh, the only thing would be, let's say, a medical check. Uh, mental issues or something like this, or, or a uh, uh, criminal uh, background. Yeah, okay, that's it. Nothing else. I don't want you to fingerprint me, finger me or something. I don't want that. I don't want anything else. I don't want to, you to know I'm buying that gun and that gun is here and how many guns I have and it's not in business. Anybody uh, expanded, got that, those rights back to me that was given by the constitution? No. Everything got smaller and smaller and smaller and in everything. When you, did, did they say anything about DACA? Did they say anything about other things? About the southern border? No, they do the same thing. When they're in power, nothing happens. When the other ones are in power, they ha it happens whatever it's said from behind. Remember, Barack Obama, before he got to be the president of the United States of America, he said that he's going to close the Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Hey, is it closed? No. And if not, why not? <laughs> because when he got in office, the guys came and said, hey, buddy, this is how things are run. Here is the list. Shut the fuck up and go over there and fool those people in front of the camera. Go. Bye. You got five minutes. That's how it is run. Do you think it's different? Oh, my God. No. No. Well, and that's not only Trump said, well, let's get all the people, let's uh, the boys from, re let's retreat from my can get the groups from Syria or from wherever, from ever, from ever, from ever. Anybody moved? No. Why? It's not how it's done. We don't want to follow what you say. You follow what we say. So, uh, yeah, more money to Ukraine. Give them more money, man. Give them more money. And uh, how are you going to give them money and this support and aid? taking from somewhere. Where are you taking it from? You don't have money. You, don't, you have a deficit. That means you spend more than you produce. So that means what are you going to do? To maintain it in a way that it's unmanageable anyway. You're going to borrow more money. You're going to print more money. And you're going to tax us more. That's how it is. And you think we're free? We're not free. How are you free? These guys can do whatever. You think you own your house? They can get the house back immediately. You know how? They will raise the taxes. Even if you have your house paid, they're going to get the, the increase the, the payment for your taxes, property taxes, and the energy and all that so, so big, so much, that you will not be able to uh, stay in a house anymore. And what are they going to do? You have to get out of it. Sell it. Who's going to buy it? And, and who's going to use it? if the taxes go so high. So you're going to just be, they can take any property you have by increasing, by the power to raise taxes for things that you have. Right now they can say, well, you paid for this one, you can, got to pay again. They're going to say that. They're going to put a tax on carbon emission. Really? How about on air uh, breathing? How much air we breathe? Then you can do that easily. Get the height of a person, get a, an average lung capacity, uh, how many, uh, you know, uh, breaths we, we take a, a minute or a day. You can calculate uh, a year and you can tax us. How much we inhale, how much oxygen and for the use of oxygen, you can tax us. And then they're going to put some certain kind of masks. And if you use that kind of mask, you know, they're going to decrease the uh, oxygen intake by, I don't know, 10%. Your brain is going to be affected in your body, but it doesn't matter to them. But you're going to pay less taxes if, if you buy the masks and if you use the mask all day long. There you go. And then you use the freaking mask like a dog and you save uh, the world. And you live like a what? I don't want to live like that. And I do not. And I, I will not live like that. So, yeah, you were free. We're free to shut the fuck up and go to work and do whatever they tell us. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong. Stay smart. Look for the truth and be just.